Hello peeps, uh, this is uh, for aviation type peeps and also for emergency responder type peeps. Uh, I just want to give a brief uh, review of my background uh, in both of these areas and then I'm going to talk uh, about the uh, accident that happened in Lima, Peru on the 18th. So today's the 21st, 20, yesterday was Sunday. Uh, yeah, it's Friday, uh, the the 18th of uh, November, 2022. 20, 20, Today is the 21st of November, 2022, and this is a. I've seen this same type of mentality firsthand, of the reasons for that accident, uh, but uh, my background, I chased. You know, I was a, I. I I came out of college, I graduated from college in 1973, and I really uh, was looking for a creative career, a career that had some creativity that, that I had a chance to be successful, and it was photography. So, uh, you know, I combined that with some of the writing skills I uh, developed over uh, my time in college. Um, but so I, I got a, a police radio scanner I had one, a tabletop at home, and then I had one that would uh, clip to my clip to my belt. So if I was out at a bar or something like that, and there was an emergency, you know, I had my ear plug, I had my earpiece plugged into the uh, into the uh, into the scanner. Um. So this, um, so I, you know, the. The scanner would notify me, or you know, I would hear the police talking about an accident somewhere. I'd go out to my car, cameras were ready, you know, film loaded and everything. I got some pretty cool stuff. Uh, a lot of it was published, but very difficult to make money and enough to uh, make a living at that. Still, you know, I did that. And so I had uh, numerous encounters with police and emergency responders. And, um, and then as far as aviation is concerned, you know, I, I was doing, I started doing aerials on a regular basis shortly after, after with that, uh, because I was looking for a way to make more money. And, you know, let me tell you, journalists, unless they're up on the network level with the television uh, broadcasting companies, or somehow or another connected, uh, but more often than not, you know, the, the journalists that I knew and the experience that I saw that they were being compensated for, man, they just weren't making enough. So, you know, I got my pilot's license in 1989, but I shot aerials all through the 80s. But from about, 19, from 1980 through 1983, 84, just before my daughter was born, I was chasing ambulances and had a number of, you know, encounters with uh, emergency responders. Uh, and uh, the police. And I can tell you, uh, it was obvious, one obvious thing to me was that they were creating, and that's the EMS, emergency responders, and the police were creating more of a hazard in responding to an emergency than the emergency itself. I mean, you know, them getting to the emergency one minute or two minutes sooner um, by doing crazy speeds through narrow roads and roads that are heavily traveled. You know, all it takes is one person in a car that doesn't understand what's going on. They pull out and, you know, this police car or you know, a fire truck or an ambulance would come by and, and clip them. And, and that happens. I don't have any statistics for you about how, how often it happens, but the, the hazard they would create going at excessive, excessive speeds over the speed limit through, you know, residential areas or even like on a, on a, on a you know, a business thoroughfare, in my opinion, far exceeded any, any benefit that they could provide by being at the scene a minute or two early, earlier. Because once you get to the scene of a, a, a you know, a, a fires can get out of control really quickly. I mean, I, I understand that. But you know, if you're going to kill somebody by trying to get to a, the scene of a um, of an emergency, 
a minute or two or three uh, earlier, it's not worth it. And this accident in Lima, Peru is a perfect example. I, it's, it's incredible. And it happened at the airport in Lima, Lima Peru. It was a, a Latum at Airbus A320, I believe. And uh, the, the Airbus was, had been cleared for takeoff and it was um, right at uh, V1 speed, which for an Airbus is, uh, God, what is it for that? It's like at least 90, maybe over 100 knots. That's a big airplane, man. It's over 100,000 pounds. And, um, and, you know, you can, it can carry up to 130, 140 people. So uh, there was something else. There was another emergency somewhere in the airport. But, you know, the airport has all kinds of visibility and as a requirement I'm fairly certain that the drivers of this fire truck that caused this accident were supposed to be in touch with the tower uh, who was you know giving clearance for takeoffs you know, you can't you can't you can't ignore that man these guys were just flying across this you know, the the tarmac of the airport to, to this other emergency scene and so what happened? They clipped this Airbus as it was rotating to take off. You know, rotation means this is flat, and rotation means that it rotates on this axis here, and the pilot pulls the yoke back gently and just gently lifts the nose to create more lift on the wings, and then it, it takes off. But it takes up, like when you're going over 100 knots, you know, that, and that could take like up to 15 seconds. 10 to 15 seconds to, to do that. Well, you're covering a lot. You're, you're moving, man. You can cover a lot of ground. So here comes this fire truck, two fire trucks, with their lights flashing and uh, their sirens blaring and everything. Okay, they're in an airport. They're on an airport tarmac. Okay, I can understand the lights. I don't, I don't know. I think the sirens were blaring. I'm pretty sure. But still, they're going way too fast, and they're approaching an active runway. <laughs> Okay, uh, an automated system doesn't make that mistake. That's human error, which is the cause of the vast majority of bad aviation accidents. And this is this was god awful, man. The, unfortunately, the, re, the emergency responders were killed, um, and uh, the plane crashed and exploded in flames. Everybody got off. There were some injuries, but everybody, there were no fatalities from the airplane, I believe. I haven't checked, I mean, I don't know if somebody went to the hospital and then died there. I don't think that was the case. But I'm going to connect um, uh, a, a factual video. Uh, I'm going to put a factual video in the description below. And it's like a two, min two minutes and 40 seconds, I believe, that gives you uh, like three different angles. Somebody inside the airplane got the accident, and there were two external views. Uh, camera views. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to drag this out. I'm just going to say the state of mind of, of these emergency responders is flawed when they, you know, go this fast and across an active runway. I, I talked before in one of my previous videos, uh, and again, it's the Captain Smith and Admiral Kimmel effect, where, you know, it's like, Mm, oh, we're fine. Yeah, go, man. Hit the pedal. Pedal to the metal, man. Pedal to the metal. We gotta get there, or we gotta, you know, just just go. And uh, they forget their their training. They forget the hazards that they can be creating by just driving at a crazy speed across the tarmac of an airport. I've seen this many times, and it's it's an adrenaline rush. Okay, no doubt about it. If you observe enough of these emergency responders uh, driving. And I did today, as a matter of fact. You know, okay, they've got a connection in their car. They're approaching a, a traffic light, and it turns green for them. But that doesn't mean that somebody, you know, still might pull out in front of them. And when, and when that happens, in that context, it's going to be a disaster. Um, the one thing I want to get across, the one problem that's really... Uh, difficult to fix is the adrenaline and the rush and the thrill that the emergency responders get from their I man their, their lights are flashing everybody notices that they're making this blaring klaxon uh, alarm sound that you know you'd have to be deaf 
n not to hear it. Uh, you know, so okay, they say, well, that that takes care of the hazard. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. You know, you going 90 miles an hour, 80, 70 miles an hour in a 25, 35 mile an hour zone is the hazard. And it's, uh, it kind of reminds me of Zero Dark Thirty, the, the, uh, the uh, SEAL team that went in to kill bin Laden in Pakistan in 2009, I think it was. No, 2011 or 12, something like that, in that, in that time frame. And they were interviewed, and they were asked, uh, the guy, a fantastic interview, I don't know if it was 60 Minutes, I'm not sure, but fantastic interview. Uh, one of the, like the lead guy, or one of the lead guys that went in and got Bin Laden. You know, once they get to the, to the compound in the house, they slow down. And they was, he was asked why, he says, because you don't want to be in a hurry to get yourself killed. The same principle applies here. You don't want to be in a hurry to kill 130 people or kill yourself or, or both. You know, you, the, the, the goal is to get to the scene of the emergency without creating a hazard, and that just doesn't exist nowadays. So and I, I, I saw that when I was chase, chasing ambulances, and they, they get this like uh, sense of uh, entitlement that they're allowed to do this, and if something happens, it's somebody else's mistake. Not, not as far as I'm concerned. When you do crazy speeds through, you know, speed limits that are 25, 35, even 45, even 55. I mean, I'm, I'm on the highway now and people are passing me doing 90 all the time, all the time. I might be doing 60 or 65, I set my, my cruise control, because a differential in speeds increases the hazard. The, 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 the intensity or the, uh, the probable uh, horrific uh, outcome of an accident. And we have 40,000 people a year dying on our highways, 40,000 people a year, that's well over 100 a day. There were people, you know, these people get up, they're driving somewhere and they die on the highways. How senseless is that? I mean, it's the human condition and the, and the, and the ego of mostly men, in my opinion, but I think there was, might have been a woman responder that was killed here. I'm not exactly sure. So check out the video. It's it's pretty good. It's, it's total factual. There's no commentary. There's no analysis or anything like that. It's just like videos, uh, different views of the video uh, of the accident. Um, and uh, basically, there's nothing you can do about it unless you're the, the, the head honcho that's in charge of the airport and you have a meeting with the emergency responders and you say, uh, before you move, and this is supposed to be the way it is. I know that's the way it is on the on, with airplanes, but as far as the emergency responders, but before they are cleared to do, to go anywhere, and this is the case with airplanes, you can't have that wheel turn on the airplane until you're given permission from the tower, because you know they look around. They've got these high-powered uh, field glasses, binoculars, really high-powered, and they see everything. You know, those towers, man, they see. They look through there and they can see everything that's going on. Uh, and so the emergency responders should be held to the same accountability and the same restrictions that an airplane is. I mean, this guy, the airplane, the A320 was cleared for takeoff on an active runway, and here comes a fire truck in front of them, and it's too late. It's too late. So check it out, and uh, I'd be curious to know, you know, whatever you might think about it. Peace.